if I'm a marketer, if I build my personal brand, if I have an emotional attachment to the world, I will not be replaced by AI and uh, my services will be still sought after in high demand by global brands because of this emotional connection, you know. But if I'm a copywriter, if I'm a blogger, if I'm a coder, if I am a uh, marketer and uh, the world is not aware of my name, I will be replaced by AI because I don't have probably uh, emotional attachment to the world because I never built my personal brand. You are listening to Power Marketing with Kevin Lee. Kevin and his agency Did It have helped thousands of businesses win through superior marketing, as have his books, articles, speaking engagements, and the eMarketing Association Power Marketing Podcasts. Here's Kevin. I'm always happy to have uh, interesting guests on the podcast. Uh, so happy to have Vladimir Botswade here uh, as a guest who uh, comes to things from a very European uh, perspective as well. And I think, you know, it's always interesting to contrast uh, how digital marketing is done uh, throughout the globe. Uh, most of my guests have a very U.S. centric perspective on digital marketing. So let's start, Vladimir, with your your elevator pitch. So when you uh, are in front of clients or up on stage and you have to give your elevator pitch, uh, what is your elevator pitch to the audiences? Hi, Kevin. You know, uh, thanks for your invitation uh, on this amazing podcast. I'm delighted to share my actionable insights with you today. You know, I have 15 years of international experience with the pro technical of guiding executives top as well right, to initiate change, drive growth, and position brands as market leaders in their industries. I have been recognized as number one global marketing thought leader by Sync 60 which is a first open platform for global thought leaders. I currently serve on the advisory boards of the United States AI Institute, Data Science Institute, and Cybersecurity Institute. I'm also a mentor at Techstars founder Catalyst in Saudi Arabia and also a, uh, at Techstars in uh, uh, Detroit, which is sponsor sponsored by JP Morgan, you know. At the same time, I, I, I'm I a judge at the Webby Awards, and uh, I I judge more than the uh, top 50 most influential uh, podcasts in the United States last year. I'm very grateful for the Webby team, and I'm also an associate member of the International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences, you know. So what has put me on the global map is that I was um, building my audience my community on x from 2014 to 2020 then i won three awards uh, in 2015 uh, i was recognized number 65 global b2b marketing influencer by analytica in 2017 i was among uh, top 100 virtual reality influencers and in 2018 i was among top 100 uh, digital transformation influencers so in 2020 i became number one by sync 60 then I judged like uh, I, I started serving on the judging panels for the various award ceremonies like Stewie Awards, Digital Revolution Awards, Lisbon Advertising Festival, Eventex Awards, and uh, also a Prolific North Marketing Awards. Also, I have uh, uh, I have started working with many speakers bureaus. I currently work with more than twenty five speakers bureaus throughout the world. So I'm also a mentor at the UCLA Anderson School of Management. Um, a startup accelerator and also UCL Enterprise Innovation in London. You know, so I believe in giving back. I share my actionable insights with uh, startup owners, entrepreneurs. Uh, specifically, I inspire them to build their personal brands. You know, right, right. Well, there's a, a really interesting shift when it comes to personal branding now versus uh, five years ago. Um, yeah. You know, personal branding has been important for a long time, but. Uh, there weren't really uh, implications, uh, AI and LLM implications to personal branding until quite recently. Um, and one of the things that I get a lot of questions about uh, when I wear the SEO advisory hat for, for Didit clients is, well, how do I future proof my visibility both as an individual and as a corporate brand for AI chatbots where the LLM may just answer one thing and there's no, no more search engine results page? Like who is yeah. the expert on this or who is the expert on that? And yeah. what's fascinating about that is, you know, having content created, having content syndicated, having digital visibility and digital public relations, right? All those things feed the LLMs, right? Which is the first part of the equation. 
uh, for sort of the AI implication of personal branding. But then you also have the potential training implications uh, from an AI and LLM perspective of trying to convince the AI that you are, in fact, an expert in a particular category. So I'd love for you to talk about how your approach to personal branding has changed as a result of the importance of syndicating out, not just having a great LinkedIn profile, not just having a great X profile, not just having great social media profiles, but thinking about where your content should live and where your personal profile should be. Yeah. Just imagine, Kevin, that uh, social media, it is a two-way communication. It's all about reactionary business, you know? And I'm very sorry that so many big brands uh, lose market share. They are broadcasters on social media and they forget their consumers. You know, I'm sorry that 50, more than 52% of uh, big brands uh, have disappeared on the Fortune 500 list since 2000, uh, you know, because they, they are in their ivory towers. They don't interact with their consumers. Uh, uh, entrepreneurs, company founders, presidents don't show their uh hot don't show their smile don't show their face so they still um depend on backward looking advertising as blockbuster depended on backward looking advertising and their i will uh, advisory board members were in the ivory towers they went out of business i i, I believe that uh, even to be a judge at many award ceremonies i i still believe that many brands are very far from their consumers you know so uh, there are only a few examples you know so uh, social media is the first time in the history of marketing communication where consumers have a voice and a reaction, you know. So whoever humanizes their brand, whoever is interested uh, in showing their heart, sm uh, smile, face, whoever directly communicates with consumers. I think uh, the best example is Elon Musk because Elon has uh, uh, always communicated with Tesla's owners on X. That's why he has built community. That's why he's trusted uh, by everyone. Uh, every uh, almost every follower is a brand uh, ambassador. They share their Tesla's pics. It it has uh, it has domino effect on uh, Tesla's uh, branding. It uh, uh, spreads like wildfire. Whereas, for example, Mercedes Benz spends more than nine hundred forty five dollar per car on advertising. Nowadays, Tesla has higher market value than the rest of traditional automakers because of this human touch. You know, human touch. And uh, so I'm sorry that, you know, uh, you know, just just brands are uh, going out of business. They are losing market share, you know, they are not ready for the fourth industrial revolution. I think the personal brand has become the brand. And even Elon Musk's, Elon Musk's example demonstrates uh, that his personal brand has become corporate brand, you know. So it is remarkable that te Tesla does not have an advertising department. And this word of mouth marketing, uh, which is cost effective, and uh, uh, it is just uh, his uh, approach has revolutionized marketing. You know, so I'm sorry that uh, the rest of traditional automakers, uh, who we admire at Ford, Mercedes Benz, BMW, Rolls Royce, Porsche. Do you do you remember anybody who you admire? You mean at the corporate level? Yes, I, I don't think I could name any of their uh, uh, CEOs off the top of my head or chief marketing officers. Exactly, exactly, Kevin. So this is a great example, great, great distinction where Tesla stands, where Elon Musk stands, and where the rest of brands stand. You know, because they they don't like personal branding. If they don't like personal branding, they should call it reputation. They should call it reputation. And uh, we, even in the age of AI, personal branding is the only sustainable competitive advantage, you know? So even, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if I'm a marketer, if I build my personal brand, if I have an emotional attachment to the world, I will not be replaced by AI and my services will be still sought after in high demand by global brands because of this emotional connection, you know? But if I'm a copywriter, if I'm a blogger, if I'm a coder, if I am a uh, marketer and uh, the world is not aware of my name, I will be replaced by AI because I don't have probably uh, emotional attachment to the world because I never built my personal brand. So, uh, so the difference between building a personal brand and not building personal brand is uh, huge. So I think everyone uh, should... Uh, a strike while the iron iron is hot and make hay while the sun shines and to start 
creating content, start showing gratitude. I uh, I started my whole journey with a single video, with a single tweet, with a single uh, uh, video message to my followers that I was uh, uh, grateful that they were appreciating my content and uh, uh, that uh, that I, I made it way straight with my consumers, with my audience, you know? So it's not it's not about uh, like accounting uh, followers. It's all about showing gratitude. It's all about showing your heart. It's all about showing your face. It's all about uh, uh, if you want to. Uh, social media is a Swiss Army knife for business growth. I have witnessed uh, through Twitter, through LinkedIn, and other rest of channels. Uh, but people became a billionaires. I think Ryan Graves is a great example because. Because uh, Travis Kalanick uh, 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 tweeted in 2011 that he was hiring the first product marketing manager, Ryan Graves, uh, responded. They met, they built Uber together, and Ryan Graves became a billionaire a few years later because of Twitter networking, you know. So so I, I have also benefited uh, greatly from Twitter because so many people endorsed me. They recommended me on LinkedIn. So many people opened the doors, you know. Many Fortune 500 brands started picking my brains, you know, uh, and so I opened so many jobs ju just because of curiosity, because of lifelong learning, because of uh, um, flexibility, because of re resilience. Uh, so these ingredients, uh, empathy and active listening, have been instrumental in my growth. I think uh, uh, active listening is very important because I believe that the most successful companies the most successful influencers are in the listening business. Listening business because they need to listen to their consumers. Uh, if I'm an influencer and speaker, I need to listen to my audience, you know? So I need to improve my service on based on the feedback of my consumers because of my audience. Because I don't I don't want to live in my own world because I'm down to earth. I, I have never been on my high horse. So I'm very close to my audience. Whether it is offline, online, I communicate with them. So I think uh, my, my whoever is closest to consumers, whoever is closest to audience, always wins. You know, right? So obviously, uh, many of the C-suite members, uh, in particular CEOs, but also maybe chief marketing officers, uh, got their jobs not having to be charismatic and authentic, and having their voice and being comfortable uh, on social media by themselves, or comfortable. Um, many of them have not had media training, right? They've never really even learned how to interact yeah. with these these channels. So it, do you feel like they can, you know, embrace it now, even if it's yeah. not, you know, comfortable for them, if they're introverted or if they've never had meeting, media training? Yeah. Can they can they be I, their authentic selves? I'm sorry, Kevin, but this education, this global ed education is Achilles heel, you know? They don't uh, teach personal branding, you know? They don't, Teach how to blog, how to build great uh, presence on Google, on social media. W what are they teaching at business schools? I don't understand. It is uh, uh, hard to understand what they are teaching. You know, so I, I I'm sorry that I'm not interested in a 1985 Nike's billboard marketing strategy. We are in a 2020 2024 world, business world. You know, so even AI has started. Uh, more than 85 million jobs will be replaced by AI next year. You know. So how people are going to stand out in this noisy digital marketplace if they are not curious, you know? So curiosity has uh, led uh, to me becoming keynote speaker, uh, a mentor, you know, a key opinion leader. I have been featured in magazines, you know, I have been a guest on podcasts, you know? And like uh, six years ago, uh, I would not have imagined uh, to be interviewed on podcast or to be to become a keynote speaker or my speaking fee to be in the ballpark of set thirty or fifty thousand dollars throughout the world. Because, but but I have shown curiosity. I have learned everything. Uh, uh, I have learned everything through networking. You know, so I I'm followed, for example, by Grant Cardone and such tycoons. And uh, I I I even even you know when you are followed by Grant. Uh, I know that I will never rest on my laurels and I always look to my laurels, you know. So I, I love such stories, you know, that uh, uh, Grant has 10 all the tables uh, and uh, uh, he he has become successful because of his persistence, discipline and uh, this curiosity and his drive, you know, I love his drive. So I think that uh, uh, anyone can become successful nowadays, you know. Uh, you know, the power... 
the power has shifted dramatically from uh, 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 media companies, big uh, advertising agencies, big corporations to human beings. Nowadays, anyone can be a media company. Nowadays, you know, anyone can create content like you do. You are creating great content through your podcast, you know. So I think that when power has shifted from uh, big media companies, big uh, uh, agencies, big corporations, newspapers, TV channels to human beings, now anyone can have a voice, anyone can be a media company, and anyone can be in the spotlight, in the limelight. They can make themselves conspicuous because of these social media channels. There are maybe uh, 20, 30 social media channels, so it, uh, content distribution is free, you know? I am not asking, you know, when I'm speaking at global events, I'm not asking my clients to run ads, which is which uh, uh, are very expensive. But content re- distribution is free, you know. My tweets used to reach 40 million people annually on X. Just imagine, at no cost, I reached 40 million people, 40 million people, you know. So I'm I'm not uh, James Clear or uh, other like renowned influencers on Twitter, but you know I have more than f- 53,000 followers because because. Uh, uh, I have uh, earned every authentic follower by dint of my hard work because I was tracking my progress from month to month. So in 2014, when I embarked on my social media journey, my cloud score was 58, but my cloud score reached 80 in 2018. You know? So I'm very thankful that uh, along the way, people recognize my hard work, my discipline, my sleepless nights. I was sleeping four hours a day instead of... Uh, uh, six hours a day because I was curious, I was pushing, I was moving forward, I was uh, exploring new things, you know, so which uh, led to remarkable achievements that I won, I have won more than 200 global awards, I have been featured, for example, in Exelion magazine, Kerry, you know, and this is a demonstration that uh, with uh, persistence, drive, uh, sleepless nights, passion, everything is possible, you know. You know, what's interesting is <clears throat> one common theme across social media, across earned media, and and, and even within paid media, is that uh, the, the algorithms uh, really are designed around a meritocracy, right? Meaning that the best content and the best content creators float to the surface. Uh, obviously, in, in TikTok, it's actually the content is more divorced from the individual, right? Because... Uh, an individual post can do particularly well, even if there's not a tremendous number of followers for a creator versus yeah. like YouTube. It's still much more about the creator and the creator's reach uh, when he he or she has a lot of followers. But that that meritocracy, I think, raises the bar from a content creation perspective and from an authenticity perspective that, you know, corporations used to be able to just throw money at things. And now they can't just throw money at things anymore. There's this meritocracy algorithm, which rewards great content, rewards authenticity, rewards uh, the people who go the extra mile. And the people who don't go the extra mile, they don't get that benefit of the algorithm, uh, either in a paid or earned media environment. So, So, Kevin, social media, you know, used to depend on following. Now it depends on interests, like TikTok like on Tumblr, you know? So, so many, so many social media networks started following TikTok's example that its content is based on interest, not following, you know? So it is a, it is a great example, but I believe that uh, the rest of, the rest of co- social media platforms are co- uh, content push out platforms. And social media um, is, a, Twitter is, Twitter is only the last bastion of where great conversation happens, you know? Right, right. It's so, all about, because because uh, because uh, many social media networks prioritize profits, whereas X, Twitter, prioritizes human connection, you know? Right, right. So for those folks who are having uh, their own Uh, either personal or brand epiphanies as a result of the conversation you and I are having now, and they want to fix the problem. So um, how do you recommend that they undergo sort of a, a reprioritization of their, of of their um, day to day, you know, uh, and how do they change around, 
you know, the percentage of the day that they spend on content creation or editorial calendaring? Or is it really more content co-creation? Should they be focused on partnering with other folks and in, in creating of content? Yeah. So, Kevin, you know, it is a great question. Thank you. Uh, for example, through YouTube, I have become a keynote speaker, public speaker, you know. And nowadays, I'm recognized among the world's top 21 artificial intelligence keynote speakers by uh, AI speakers agents in the UK, you know, top, world's top 21. Uh, and uh, so also Engage, Engage, which is the speakers bureau in the United States, recognized me among top 100 marketing speakers. You know, why? Because, because uh, in 20, 2019, I have recorded, I have re recorded uh, uh, 40 videos through this device and I uploaded to YouTube and my videos uh, obtained more than 2,000 views. Now I work with speakers bureaus. Why? Because of this device, because of te storytelling, you know, because sharing my passion, sharing my passion. So we need to start sharing our stories, authentic stories with the world, because this is the only thing this world loves. We need to we need to show the world that we are our own masters, you know? So so I think uh, we I, I advise everyone to put their eggs into different baskets because there are so many social media experts who tell you that put all your eggs into LinkedIn, it will work, you know? It is a drop in the ocean, you know? So when I... When I have skyrocketed my presence on Twitter from 2014 to 2022, I mean, um, uh, I mean, people started following me also on Instagram, on Tumblr, on LinkedIn, on Facebook page, uh, on Medium. You know, because why? Because uh, w when uh, when you show your heart, your smile, your face, people trust you. You build community. You have emotional connection with your followers. You know. So what is the difference between audience and community, right? If I have a podcast and I have my audience, people people don't know each other, right? Because they listen to my podcast. But but when I build my community on Twitter, people know each other. I bring them together. You know, they make stronger bonds. This is amazing, right? Because, for example, I have always been inspired by community of Harley Owners Group, which is uh, belongs to Harley Davidson, you know, where more than 700,000 riders go to Stargis to attend festivals. And what what uh, uh, Harley Davidson uh, uh, does through organizing this festival, they bring community together. They are making friendships in the community, you know. They are proud of uh, owning their motorcycles of uh, Harley Davidson, you know. So I think it is a great example that through our activities, through our presence on Twitter, on social media. We need to bring community together and where we can... Uh, it's communion, right? People know each other. But in audience, people don't know each other, you know? So I think um, it is the easiest time in the history of mankind, of business, just to be successful if you decide to take action. But what I see nowadays is that people waiting, people are waiting for someone's green light to, to move forward, which is which is this dismal, you know, and gloomy. So I think uh, people need to start moving forward. They need to start creating content. They need to start showing gratitude, to start showing curiosity on a daily basis, choosing resilience, lifelong learning, flexibility, self-motivation, um, then uh, empathy, active listening, and they will be successful in the long term, you know. Oh, and yeah. also, Kevin... Kevin, Kevin, for example, when you Google digital marketing keynote speaker, my website, vladimirbotswaze.com, is ranked number one speaker website in the world, you know? Why? Because of my great personal brand. And, uh, for example, I, er I have earned business world trust, you know? I never, I never uh, spent any amount of dollars on promoting or advertising, but earning trust is one of the biggest achievements in marketing. You agree, right? Absolutely. Yeah, well, uh, trust is often the, the tiebreaker between brands or between individuals, right? Because uh, the product or the service is somewhat indistinguishable. So trust not only 
changes the decision about which one to choose, but it also allows you to have a brand uh, pricing, which is a yeah, so, charge. So, yeah, it, it, it does not take rocket science to understand how easy social media is. And through networking, you can move up in the world, gain ground and go places, you know. So you will be in a catbird seat. You will be a mover and shaker. You will play the first year. You will achieve your goals at no cost, right? So uh, if I want to advertise my product in newspapers, I have to buy a full page ad, right? Which is expensive. If I want to advertise on TV, I have to pay those to, to run my TV commercials. If I want to buy billboards in the streets, I need to uh, pay uh, advertising agencies to buy billboards in the streets, right? So I eyeballs and ears are going in different places. There are 8.1 billion people in the world, 5.6 billion uh, mobile users, 5.3 billion uh, uh, internet users, and 5.1 billion social media users, you know? So question nowadays is, how do you stand out in this noisy digital social media ecosystem, you know? So uh, we lived in times that was dominated by, I mean, lawyers, doctors, engineers. We we'll, Now we live in, in this time uh, dominated by content creators, influencers, coders, you know? So I think uh, content creation and uh, uh, storytelling are the bedrock of growth nowadays, you know? Right, right. Well, there are a lot of uh, businesses that uh, will perhaps discover that someone with uh, either a small network or a large network of, of, of community or, or friends or followers uh, is already a user of their brand, right? So it's the perfect authentic spokes spokesperson because they, they already uh, drive that car or prefer that brand. And they want to try to engage this influencer and take advantage of the person's you know, communication style and the trust that this individual has with their network, but they want it to come across authentically. So do you have any strategies of how marketers can tap into their passionate customers already, uh, whether they're micro-influencers, mid-influencers, or even potentially uh, significant influencers that that would be happy to help the brand that they love? Um, yeah, so, Davidson so obviously has people so passionate about the brand, they're willing to tattoo themselves, which is unusual, right? But in the case of other brands, maybe there are other brands where, you know, folks have a, a passion level for the brand and are willing to help that brand uh, get the word out. So I think that uh, if you want to spread your word, uh, the best way is to work influencers, whether it is TikTok influencer or Instagram influencer, you know? And uh, or even a Twitter influencer or LinkedIn influencer. I think uh, collaborating uh, with influencers is one of the uh, core uh, drivers of success nowadays. So uh, I'm a mentor at Techstars nowadays and the plug and play tech center, tech center and Maya. And uh, uh, I think that one of the, uh, of course, community based marketing is a most effective marketing strategy, which is followed by influencer marketing partnership and uh, because advertising i think uh, it is going away you know because we are we are in the streaming economy and when you watch netflix you watch no ads when you listen to spotify you listen no ads uh, amazon prime no ads disney plus no ads we listen to audio books no ads even when we listen to podcasts we listen no ads right so so i think uh People are even pay more not to consume ads, you know. So, so trust in businesses, advertising, and brand uh, and brands uh, declined fifteen years in a row. Kevin, fifteen years in a row, you know, more than seven hundred fifty million consumers have ad blockers on mobile devices, and probably one out of three American uh, has ad blocker on their mobile devices. Just imagine, you know. So. More than two hundred billion dollars are wasted on advertising. Literally, big brands put their money into trash. They don't even realize this, but they do. And uh, so, content creation is a game. Uh, storytelling is a game. Storytelling is why Nike is Nike, right? Storytelling is why Richard Branson has built one his huge business because Richard is one of the best storytellers, right? Uh, um, uh, 
uh, storytelling is why those athletes uh, may, uh, may make millions and billions of dollars through partnering with brands, you know? So I think that uh, uh, nowadays, influencers uh, help brands tell their stories, you know? Because advertising uh, is uh, on the decline. I think the best deal is still Super Bowl ads because every American watches Super Bowl ads, right? Almost every American. So I think it is the best deal. But when it comes to social media, uh, people uh, nowadays, consumers are very skeptical about ads. So I think that everything is changing. Grease Lightning, what worked last year, no longer works in 2024. People uh, need to uh, uh, keep their finger on the pulse of the latest trends. What is trending? Personal branding. The personal brand has become the brand. I think everyone needs to show their heart, to show their smile, to show their face, and to directly communicate with uh, their consumers. But but I think that uh, 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 I mean uh, company founders are very scared of communicating with consumers because com so consumers have reaction on social media, which is uh, <laughs> uh, a, <laughs> a bit eerie, eerie because, you know, not many founders are willing to communicate with their consumers and to show gratitude to make two-way street and to improve uh, their products based on the feedback of their consumers, you know? So... Social media is a listening platform, not bro, 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 not talking, because everyone is interested nowadays uh, uh, in talking, you know. I'm uh, interested in listening, you know. So I think, Kevin, that uh, lifetime value and retention are everything nowadays. It is uh, everything. It's a be all and end all. So companies that truly understand lifetime value and retention are going to be the ones who are going to win in the long term, like Amazon and uh, Starbucks and uh, Harley Davidson, you know, right, right. Um, well, you know, the other uh, interesting thing that, uh, as it relates to meritocracy, is you know many brands are realizing that um, part of the brand experience is a part of the marketing touchpoint is the brand experience, right? So yeah. if you doesn't matter how much how good even your earned media or social media is, if you can't fulfill on the promise that is your brand because your product or your service is subpar bad news travels fast in social media right if yes so you need to you need to maintain that level of delivery it's not just aspirational but you're making a brand promise to people when you're discussing you know what your product or your service does so i think the 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 uh emphasis is also on delivery of of the promise that you make uh whether you make it in paid media or earned media and Kevin, just imagine that sixty percent of consumers expect to be acknowledged by brands. Sixty percent of consumers, you know. I think the best example is Emily Weiss, who co-founded Glossier, and she started this a uh, billion-dollar business through blogging, you know. Right. And uh, she uh, she she was treating uh, her blog readers as friends, you know. And her marketing team used to control. And monitor the the biggest fans on Instagram, Twitter, the rest of social media channels, and they were interviewing those biggest fans for their website. I think it is a best marketing tactic to to respect and to acknowledge your consumers and to show them on their website on one to one interviews. You know, so right. I think it was best. That's why Emily Wise was thinking outside the box. That's why she built this billion dollar business through blogging and I, I have witnessed you know so many open-minded entrepreneurs built uh, a multi-billion dollar businesses through um, uh, directly communicating with their consumers you know I think uh, one of the biggest disruptors is uh, Brian Chesky who co-founded Airbnb and uh, uh, from year to year uh, he was very consistent to improve uh, Airbnb's products through asking questions and, and communicating with Airbnb's users directly, you know? So I think, uh, do you remember anybody from those luxury hotel brands where their executives communicate with their consumers on Twitter? I, I don't know anybody. Right. Yeah. It's a, re it's a reoccurring theme between the, uh, 
using the feedback loop, right? That social media. So this is everything. This is everything. This curiosity and uh, agility are the uh, bedrock bedrock of growth nowadays. I'm sorry that they are slow. It's no longer it's no longer about big or small. It's all about fast versus slow. You know, right? Are there uh, cultural differences in the execution of that strategy, depending on whether you're in Asia, Europe, or the United States, or is it common globally? No, I mean, Europe, they are still debating the ROI of social media in Europe, you know? I mean, uh, the ROI of social media is trillions of dollars, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, but from an execution perspective, right? Is yeah, it the they, they don't want to story tell, you know? Everyone wants to regulate social media in Europe because uh, it it has opened the floodgates to business owners to help them maximize their success, you know? I mean, as I mentioned, Kevin, that the power has shifted dramatically from big media companies, big organizations, ad, ad agencies, newspapers, TV channels, to human beings, you know? Now everyone can create content, you know? Yep, absolutely. Uh, any thoughts on on Asia or countries within Asia? Do you believe that they uh, also should be executing on the strategies the same way? Well, you know, they are not as as uh, as agile and fast as, for example, those in the United States, because I think the United States uh, has most unicorns in the world because of great marketing, because of storytelling, because this curiosity, because everyone fires on all cylinders, they go into overdrive, they leave no stone unturned, whereas Wherever I speak in Asia or Europe, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they, they are debating the ROI social media, you know. So I'm not in the convincing business, Kevin, you know. <laughs> at the end of my talk, at the end of my talk, uh, at the end of my talk, everyone is motivated. But I know that only a few people will go back home and they will build their, they will start building their personal brands instead of watching movies, right? So, so. I think uh, uh, I think work ethic is what can set you apart. And if you want to work sixteen hours a day, you can work sixteen hours a day. But people today are debating about burning out, about why you work like hell. Why Elon Musk said that if you work forty hour work weeks and other people work hundred hour work weeks, you will achieve in four months what it takes for them a year to achieve. People are debating constantly about work ethic. You know so. I think it was my choice that I work 16 hours a day and I sacrifice and I have well deserved success in 2024 because I, I I invested my last dollar into my website, you know? Right, right. I, I think part of that is uh also uh the the people who enjoy that their 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 work and their their they're communicating with their larger ecosystem that doesn't feel like work to them i certainly doesn't feel like work to me i feel the same as a, an actor or a singer that i'm blessed yeah. to do the things that yeah, i do yeah <laughs> yeah For, uh, so luckily luckily uh i have told my stories through my tweets through my videos through my podcast appearances through my magazine interviews and uh, of course uh, this iphone x that i had in 2019 put me on the global map that I have become a public speaker. I have been signed with, uh, uh, I mean, global speaker bureaus. And from nothing, I have created success from nothing, right? So I think uh, uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays, uh, I, uh, I'm i uh, gaining momentum. I have made breakthrough. Uh, I have um, uh, uh, made a quantum leap in my career just because why? Because I have taken massive action, you know? Right, right. Well, th those are all great lessons for everybody listening. I, I appreciate appreciate you joining uh, the podcast and sharing your wisdom with everyone who's watching and who's listening. Uh, thanks Thank so you much. so much, Kevin. You know, my success is not accidental, you know, and when I remember my first step in the United States, I was involved in a summer exchange program in 2006. I got a, a social security card from the State Department. I had my tra a week training in Washington, D.C. area. Then I worked in uh, Virginia, Menezes, like uh, 25 minutes drive from DC. And uh, then uh, then I moved to New York City, which is, I mean, the best city in the world because of this, uh, uh, I mean, this uh, frenetic uh, pace of life, right? Which is remarkable. And uh, so dreams come true in the New York City. 
I started seeing the world faster, is it clearer? And I knew in, in 2006 when I was 19 in New York City that and I, I was going to give 150% day in and day out consistently to make my dreams come true, you know? Great. Well, congratulations on your success. And I look forward to catching up uh, with you next year to hear about the next uh, chapter of your success. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you so much. Kevin Lee's Power Marketing is available on all your favorite podcast networks. Kevin loves helping businesses excel at marketing. Having marketing challenges? Just like Santa in the Miracle on 34th Street. If Kevin can't help you, he'll know someone who can. Find him on LinkedIn, subscribe or follow.